Well, hello, friends. Thought I'd just uh, give you a little update <clears throat> on the 29 Ford Model A. There she is. Uh, just a little background on it. Uh, many years ago, my father-in-law gave me his 1931 Sport Coupe, which I cherished deeply. I owned it, had it titled in my name for three years. And then he had to go into a nursing facility. And of course, Medicaid came after me and took my car away from me. They made me sell it and give them the money. Uh, I didn't have the money to buy it myself. I was still raising kids at that time. Anyway, so my car was gone. I always wanted another one. And uh, I always talked about it with my wife, my kids, how I would really like to get another Model A. Well, here, we had our 50th wedding anniversary here beginning of August, <clears throat> and uh, my wife and my kids got together and bought me this little gem here, this 1929 four-door. I've always liked this body style. She's a real pretty car. It was restored some time ago, I'm trying to keep it in good shape. <clears throat> bought a few accessories for it, like this, this trunk and the rack that goes with it, and uh, we had a little trouble, of course, with an almost 100-year-old car, you're going to have a few issues. Right away, we recognized it needed a head gasket. <clears throat> so we thought, well, that's easy. I did a head gasket on the other model. I had, did it in an afternoon, no trouble. Well, this was not the case with this one. This one had been had been uh, leaking by under, you know, in the inside of the engine, and it rusted the studs solid, the, the head studs, and it took me about a week to get off of that. And in the process, uh, I cracked the head, trying to get the thing off of there was quite a job. Also in the process of trying to get the distributor out, I busted off the top of the distributor from from the back. I'll just show you. <laughs> here, here's, here's what's left of it here. This... <laughs> You see the bottom broke off. Well, you can see the shiny spot on the bottom. That's actually all that was holding it. Somebody else had tried to get this off of here, and it, and it had started to break, and they quit while they were ahead. And uh, so it was quite a process, to say the least, to get that get that out of there. It took me it took me quite a long time. <clears throat> Finally. <clears throat> After all was said and done, I bought a brand new head for it. It's got the five to one police head, they call it. Uh, it gives you about 14 horsepower more. And uh, so we're going to enjoy that. But uh, <clears throat> I just thought I'd show you the, some of the process that, uh, that I, I used to, to get to where I am at this point. Uh, before I bought the new head, I did everything I could to make the, the old head work. There's the old head there. It, it's all nice and true now, but it has a crack up on the top. But uh, I, I trued it all up nice, and I, I may do the repairs on that head here in the future. I'll just, I'll just show you the method that I used <coughs> of truing the head. And the manifolds. I've got a piece of <coughs> tempered glass here. And I'll just show it to you here. Just hang on. You see how I... I use double stick tape to tape down some sandpaper onto, the, uh, onto this hard tempered glass. Laid it on my table saw. And just used a couple of strips of masking tape to hold it so it wouldn't slide and laid the head on that. There was another sheet up, up there, a bigger sheet. I had three sheets on there at one time. <coughs> but anyway, just sliding that head back and forth, back and forth, turn it in for in, slide it back and forth, about 25 strokes at a time in each direction, repeatedly for actually for hours. It probably took. I don't know, two or three, four hours to sand that head down to get it perfect. I got it down to within a thou, thousandths of an inch. 
Uh, did the same thing with the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold to true them up nicely. Did the same thing on the water neck. It was a little out and then also sanded the old head so that that, uh, that surface was true. Uh, but anyway, we got, got all that done and uh, now, oh, and at the same time, while I had it apart, <laughs> I decided to do a valve job on it. So we uh, pulled all the valves out and uh, the front exhaust valve and the rear exhaust valve, the two extreme ends of the engine, both of them were just not very good. They looked it was like they were worn excessively. So we put two new valves in and then lapped all the valves in, ground the stems to 15 thousandths clearance. And uh, that's quite a process to do all that. But I, I did it on, on, uh, on my own shop tools here. I didn't have anything special. To grind the valve stems, for instance, uh, I just set up a little jig on, on my... Uh, Harbor Freight disc sander. This sander right here, I had a little jig set up on it that I could slide the valve stem back and forth in a groove along there and then just take off, you know, each pass would take off about a half a thousandth. Oh, here's the little, oh, this is, this is one. Yeah, this is, this is what I had on here. See, I clamped, clamped that to the, to the uh, deal and just slide that back and forth and spin the valve as I was doing it one step at a time being very careful not to take too much off but anyway we got that that all done uh, of course I had to buy a special tool to uh, knock the valve guides out because in order to get the valves out you have to you have to knock out the, uh, the valve guides I just can't see. I guess I put that away somewhere. <clears throat> but it, you know, it just kept mounting and mounting and mounting. Every time you'd do something, there'd be another thing you had to do. But <clears throat> now it's uh, it's it runs real great. I put a new water pump in it. I bought off eBay a fellow that rebuilds them. An old guy had done it for years. So that water pump's real nice. Finally got the carburetor to stop leaking by using the the uh, rubber tipped needle valve or, or float valve that finally did it so it doesn't leak at all anymore uh, uh, and if you can look down in the motor you can see i built a little timing uh, plate that goes in is that shiny plate down on the on the pulley that that mounts there so i can get i can get exact timing uh, with a timing light so I know now that when I I use the special little cam wrench that they that they sell for these, and I put it where it should be I, with two with three notches down on the on the timing advance, uh, I'm I'm actually uh, the 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 engine is retarded by by uh, 10 degrees with three notches down. No, that's that's not right. <laughs> When it's in the full up position, it's it's uh, 10 degrees retarded. When it's when it's three notches down, it's top dead center, firing on top dead center. So, so when you pull it all the way down, I'm going to guess you're going to be about 25 to 30 degrees uh, advance. I need to put a few more marks on there so I can get an accurate reading on full advance. But there is no vacuum advance. It's just the advance that's on the on the steering wheel you can see the lever you see the lever there on the left side that's the vacuum the, the mechanical advance but uh yeah she's she's running good now next thing is going to be signal lights i've got all the stuff ordered to to put signal lights on it and make it a lot easier than rolling the window town every time you go to come to a corner to do a hand signal so anyway <clears throat> There she is. Uh, this this here on the front of the radiator, that's not a leak. That's just from water spilled. I need to brush that off with a, with a soft brush, clean that up. But uh, 
Yeah, we, I also put, notice the two mirrors on there, the hinge mount mirrors. It had one mirror before, and it was one of these ones that mounts, it kind of had a couple of set screws that was mounted here. Look, it took the paint off. I need to touch that up. And, uh, but uh, there's a few little things like that that I can take care of yet. But uh, she's looking forward to driving it take it out for coffee and take a little run here, run there around the area. I'm not going to go far with it. It's This is just something that I enjoy. So anyway, there's a, there's the update. She's looking good. Here, I'll put the hood down so you get a little better idea how she looks. Looks a little nicer with the hood down. This little bottle down here, that just holds uh, about a half a cup of uh, automatic transmission fluid that I add to the gas. Every time I gas up, these, these old uh, engines didn't have hardened valve seats, so you put a little ATF in your fuel, it pads the valves. That valve job should last a long time doing that, but anyway, isn't she a beauty? These, these are such a, a pretty, pretty car. Really looking forward to driving it. So if you enjoyed this, if you found anything helpful in it, uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Ask questions if there's anything you'd like to know about the process I use to make it work. I don't be afraid to ask questions. I'd be glad to answer. So with that, I'll sign off and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk some more later.